All right, everybody. Glad to have you here on the podcast with us. And by us, I mean me and Ken. Ken Hogan, uh, he and I got to know each other a while back. His story represents, I think, something that's really cool uh, in the saga of Sight Shift, which we'll get into that later. But for now, Ken, so glad to have you here. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for inviting me. Appreciate it. Dude, I, uh, I I think for me, one of these things that is so fun about life is when you can make work about hanging out with people that you enjoy being with. So uh, this is too cool. Um, recently, you got a transition, and I think it just gives people context. Uh, talk a little bit about what you're doing right now in the work ro- world, your role, what you're passionate about, and uh, we'll go from there. I appreciate it again. Um, <laughs> so I was with a, a small um boutique marketing agency in columbus ohio for about five years and um uh received uh an invitation to look at another opportunity and um actually joined another marketing agency uh full service full stack digital agency based out of san diego they've got an international presence um uh, I guess in short, I'm their director of sales uh, they hired me to be their first director of sales, which is pretty exciting. But uh, there are some folks that, you know, we're reaching out to in some you know, large pharma organizations that we felt necessary to, to tweak the, the title a little bit. I'm not big on titles, but sometimes people, you know, they want to feel important. So director of strategic partnerships, um, I'm looking for the right clients. I'm looking for quality clients. And uh, um, it, really everything that um, I've been intentional about when it comes to, you know, implementing and, and applying um, from site shift is, I mean, I, I use it every day in what I do. Um, mm. Sometimes I don't realize it. Sometimes I have to be very intentional with, with, with what I do and, and, and how I'm doing it. And uh, uh, I could ramble quite a bit about it, but I, I don't want to. Um, real blessed to have, you know, the opportunity that I have uh, with the organization. I, I also serve as a, uh, an interim pastor. Um, with, within a, a specific region in the state of Ohio. So when organizations, uh, churches are going through transitions, um, I, I'll step in in an interim capacity, you know, and, and walk with them through that transition. So um, there's a lot of insecurities in, in that arena. You know, am I the right person? Am I the right fit? And uh, again, I, I, I just try to apply the things that um, we talk about, you know, that sometimes we take for granted in this, in this site shift world, but again, just being very intentional about learning and, and uh, being sensitive to kind of what's going on, on, on the inside and not being too hard on ourselves. Yeah. Right on, right on. There's like so much there. So thank you because we've already jumped right into it. And that's what I love. Like, let's get into the heart of it right now. And yeah. uh, no doubt you're you're in this place where you're using your strengths to develop relationships, strategic partnerships, leading organizations through change, the weekend, uh, helping helping these churches that way. That's uh, that's really inspiring. And one of the things that I think is just huge about what you're what you closed there with was saying, hey, we don't need to be too hard on ourselves. Um, y- you, you know. I think right now there's just so much going on in the world, right? There's just so much chaos and controversy and crisis. In what ways in your interacting with others and leading others, do you see that affecting them? Do you see that turning into ways that they're hard on themselves? Boy, everybody wants to be the best at something. Um, I mean, if I'm being truthful, I I can't tell you how many things I've looked at, especially on LinkedIn in the last 36 hours. Um, There's a uh, there's an image going around. There's been a lot of layoffs in the tech space and there's uh, pictures of CEOs posting selfies of them crying because they're having to make hard decisions. I, I think there's an appropriate level of vulnerability and where people are struggling is they're either too vulnerable or they're not vulnerable enough. And if you're too vulnerable, you appear to be fake. If you're not vulnerable enough, you appear to be fake. So let's um, let's just be sensitive to that. There's There's gotta be an, an appropriate level of vulnerability. Um, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't know how to lead through this. That's okay. Because if you're leading, there's other people that you're leading and there's other people that are leading alongside of you. So if it all falls on your shoulders, that's a pretty tough weight to bear. 
And, uh, you know, having a good group of people that you can bounce ideas off of, having a good group of people that you can you can uh, tap into is, is great. So uh, I, I hope that answered your, your question there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I mean, it, it, it's the way that we're hardening ourselves shows up in the way that we're either too vulnerable and we're seeking that validation or we're not vulnerable enough and we're overprotecting ourselves. And you're you're, you know, laying down this, this tension point that is the healthy place where we don't have to be so hard on ourselves. We don't have to be alone. And it's the appropriate vulnerability depending on where we are. Yeah. I think about it like most healthy leadership is just being a healthy parent, right? And if I had to make big changes to our family, I wouldn't post a picture of myself making that hard decision and, you know, what it did to me. Um, and, and I don't want to throw rocks because I mean, I, it, who knows? Somebody's tired and makes a decision or whatever. But as a coach, I would tell them, Hey, you, you don't want to make it about you. How can the vulnerable expression help others without doing that? And, and that's honestly not something people are naturally good at, as you know, and leadership. So often they tend to cover up what, what is there or they're overdoing it because of something they feel, you know, insecure about. Um, Wow. It just, you know, I feel like you're in this place right now and, and maybe you're always there, but at least the last couple of times we've connected just such momentum in your own intuition and insight. And, um, you had actually even said something to me. We were catching up a while back and man, there's the way that you phrased that. Uh, I'll even say it might as well. Let's share some love. You, you said, I don't have to protect peace. Peace protects me. And just the way that you, I don't have to guard the peace. You said the peace guards me. And and the way that that showed up as your lived truth was so strong and, and it impacted me. And, dude, I still think about it. So so thank you for, for bringing those truth bombs to us. Yeah, I mean, th that's tested every day. Mm. I, I mean, really, like, I, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to guard this. Um, you either live it or you don't. You have to be intentional about some of these things. You have to be intentional about your thoughts. You have to be intentional about um, how you, how you approach something. Um, years ago I had, uh, I, I woke up and this, this was before I started putting a significant focus on my mental health. <laughs> and I remember having a, um, an epiphany, whatever you want to call it one morning that I don't want to wake up every day trying not to mess up. Mm. And I had to give mm. myself permission. It's okay mm. to mess up. What do you do there? Okay, well, let, again, let, let's not be hard on ourselves. Let's be authentic. Um, mm -hmm. There's such a lack of authenticity out there, whether you're trying, whether you're in a sales role, whether you're in a, a, a leadership role, managerial role. Um, I think people just want to connect with people that, you know, they feel good about and that they, um, you know, they don't have that gut feeling of what's this person want for me. Yeah. I just want in my role, my job. I want to look for strategic partnerships where I have an authentic connection with somebody, where we enjoy talking to one another. If we can't do that, then we're not going to be good partners. Mm, mm, so well, let's well find said. some common ground. Let's talk about some cool things. Let's, you know, we're, we all have bad days. Mm. Give yourself permission to have a bad day. Bad days mm. are going to happen. Bad days don't last. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's uh, it's such a great reminder for us. You know, we're all going to have those moments. Um, I'd like to get just a little bit of a snapshot of where you're at from from the moment of it all. Where do you feel right now that you've got just some real momentum? <clears throat> Something's giving you a lot of joy. You're getting that dopamine from it. It feels good. Uh, what comes to mind with that? Boundaries mm. and uh, establishing the boundaries and being very clear of where the boundary is. Um, mm. There have been times in the last few years where just because you have an idea or somebody brings an idea to you and they need your help, you can't control how they respond to their part of that idea. I don't need to drive everything. Mm. I can do my part. And I have to be secure in letting my part be my part. And I am so, uh, um, I'm not wound as much as what I used to be because I used to feel like if you brought something to me, I had to, Chris, when are you going to get your part done? Hey, we talked about this last time. I can't control how you respond. You can't control how I respond. So I'm just going to control what I can control. And uh, uh, you and I have talked about this before. I have absolutely hated at one point in time 
you're you're relaxing into your brilliance tagline <laughs> and and now i'm learning to embrace it more and more because i i don't have to have my fingers in everything and i'm okay with letting somebody else's decisions create the natural consequence that keeps them on on track yeah man that's and and for me it's like that's not codependence that's not assertive independence that's interdependence right and uh mm -hmm. what a what a beautiful way to to state that well i hear the momentum and the insights where right now do you feel like you know this is this is a place i feel stuck in or or i'm challenged there i'm losing it i'd like to get better in it uh, what comes to mind there? Any Anywhere you feel vulnerable enough to share? Yeah, I'm always, when, when something isn't going fast enough or something isn't um, going my way, if I don't have the right answer, I'm always trying to grasp at it and trying to get control of it and get the, control is the big thing. Um, letting go of that control. Just letting yeah. it play out. Yeah, That's hard. Yeah. And that that is a that is a daily. If I if I'm surrendering something every day, I am surrendering control that I feel like I need to have. Mm, mm. Man, I f I feel that with you. Tell me, walk us through like a simple moment at work where it would show up, and that control, you know, as specific as you can be about the issue, and that control would start to to show up in you. What do you do? What's the issue, and what do you do? Well, I mean, in my prior role, a lot fell on my shoulders. I mean, we mm -hmm. still had a team, but a lot fell on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And some of that was a choice and some of it wasn't. And I am truly in a team environment today. Mm -hmm. And when I, and this comes up when, because, you know, I work with a lot of people on Pacific time. So it's like, I want to get an answer fast, but I can't get an answer fast because they're three hours behind or, or whatever. But uh, when I start to feel the need for control, um, I'll get more fidgety. Um, my thoughts will start to race a little bit. Um, heart rate will go up. And a lot of times I'll just close my MacBook, take my AirPods out, take a short walk, breathe a little bit, just, you know, inhale, exhale, mm -hmm. just kind of clear my head. Um, I don't want to go off on a, a tangent, but there's this, thing called mindfulness out there. And I don't necessarily agree with the term mindfulness because a lot of times that terminology is flushing the bad thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's an empty space there. Mm -hmm. What are you going to fill it with? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, you have to take a bad thought and you got to replace it with a good thought because, you know, I've had a lot of negativity in, in my life and, you know, that negativity has created a rut. It's created a, a neural pathway that is, it just, it sucks and it's hard to break. Mm -hmm. But when you start replacing it with a healthy thought, that's where I go. Just those a, a real quick break, a walk, um, a stretch, uh, mm -hmm. standing in my backyard, taking some deep breaths in the sunshine. And then it's like, OK, we're good. Mm -hmm. Let's go back in. I don't I don't need to control this. I can wait. Beautiful. A pattern interrupt. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a free podcast. Come on. We're, this is awesome, Ken. Thank you. Because we're all facing these issues, right? We're all in these yeah. moments where I start to feel that like antsy. I'm trying <clears throat> to push this through. And uh, that pattern interrupt can be so powerful. And, and once I get that pattern interrupt, I get the perspective. I'm like, okay, I've started to wrap up who I am into this. I feel like my advancement is being blocked. And, and this this progress that I'm seeking that's being blocked, I'm thinking there's more progress, which means there will be more glory, more worth. And that pattern interrupt helps me rem remind myself of that. So thank you, man. Thank you. Um, as you have journeyed already so much and continue to journey in your own growth, this is a fun question. I love asking it. Um, no doubt there's a part of you that you've learned to appreciate, right? If we talk about building our lives around our strengths, what does Ken like about himself the most? What's or a part you're really proud of, of who you are? The most situations and um, take a temperature of the room pretty quickly. Mm. Take a temperature in the conversation pretty quickly. Um, there's uh, there are some folks that are peacekeepers and some folks that are peacemakers. And peace 
keepers are like a thermometer in the room. That's not what I'm referring to. Um, I, I like going down that peacemaker road because that peacemaker road, if you if you picture a thermostat, mm. yes, a thermostat will tell you the temperature in the room, but having the the confidence and the wherewithal to be able to adjust the temperature up or down is is a good thing. And I, I've just learned to tap into that a little bit more. Um, doesn't mean you know everything. Doesn't mean that every situation goes your way. But there's a lot that gets accomplished in the tension. Mm. Man, yeah. Thermostat or thermometer. I love that distinction. Um, my family feels it in the summertime when I'm recording these. We've relaunched the podcast, so I'm recording these in the summer. So I turn the air off because my setup is at the house. <laughs> and I'm like, you're going to bake for a little bit, but you'll be all right. <laughs> um, with your journey of just growth and, and wanting to learn and get better, not that there is, but is there like an origin moment for you where something really clicked and you're like, wow, I really want to grow my awareness. I want to work on myself. I want to get better. Um, love to hear about, and if there's not a specific moment, just like what, when you started to really see momentum in developing yourself. I'll go back to where I first got introduced to sight shift and in my conversation with, uh, with the, the, the main man, Gary Fowler. Um, <laughs> I, I actually had met Gary several years prior and reconnected with him. And you know, I just, his name just kept coming to me and I'm like, you know, like we got some common connections and, and, um, you know, we went down this road, but you know, I, I remember going to him and we were just chatting, we had a cup of coffee and, uh, he said, I'm just going to throw this out there to you. I got this small group starting tomorrow and this it's called figure that shift out. And I was like, dude, you had me at the title. <laughs> and uh, he goes, it starts tomorrow. And I, said, I can't come tomorrow. I'm, I'm going out of town. He said, you can skip the first one. So I got the book. And while I was out of town, I started reading it. And um, there was a comment that you made in, in the first chapter of the book about going out and shopping for pineapple. <laughs> and, I, I, and it's not about the pineapple I, I think you said something about you know about not wanting to mess up mm. and it, you had me right there that was that was where i was like okay the hook is there the hook has been set now i'm just going to ride this thing out and what it what it really helped me do is um it helped me focus a, a bit because i was lacking a lot of focus focusing on me I would always put focus on everybody else, but I, I, I had never established the boundary for myself. I had never established what I wanted and how I felt. I knew where I wanted to go, but I went there at the uh, very high cost of me, mm. and I don't do that anymore. Mm. Wow. I, the, just the way that you say it with such clarity – and truth and empowerment, dude, props, props to the journey on pop props to what you're growing and learning. Uh, what right now would be like a challenge that you're facing in your own leadership, whether it's just the context or the market or, or mm -hmm. wherever you find yourself. But as a leader, you're looking at your situation and going, I want, I'm challenged here. And, and this is a, it could be something outside of your control. It could be something you can work on yourself. Where's your mind go with that? Well, I mean, uh, I'm a leader in my family. Um, mm. I got two adult children. You parent adult children differently than you parent your 12 year old son. Mm. Um, and th I mean, that's, I could leave it right there. That's mic drop right there. Um, yeah, dude, you're uh, hitting me in the field. So I have to tell you, I mean, cause yeah, <laughs> ours will be 20, 18 and 17 this year. <laughs> yeah. I've got a 21 year old and a 20 year old. And, um, I've had a lot of anxiety uh, over the last couple of years. You know, my, my 21 year old just graduated college. My, uh, my, my, my 20 year old is uh, very driven, just like me. Um, he's got the world by the, by the tail and, and, and thinks she owns it. And um, I have to let my kids be adults. It's not about telling them what to do and expecting them to do it. It's, Hey, we have a relationship and if I'm concerned about something, I'm going to let you know, just like I would, I would call you Chris up if I saw you doing something out and about, Hey, Chris, I'm, I'm a little concerned at something. Can we, mm -hmm. can we have a conversation? Mm 
-hmm. And that's how I have to approach it with my kids. But more importantly, with my adult kids, I have to go back to a statement that my wife and I made years ago. And that was, we, we want them to grow up to be responsible adults. And at the end of the day, they're responsible adults. So we're, we're patting ourselves on the back that, hey, they have a foundation, but just because they don't do it dad's way and just because they don't do it mom's way doesn't mean it's wrong. And and just letting them go, you know, surrendering them every day and not not trying to control it. I, I don't want to be one of those parents mm. that, you know, the, the helicopter, you know, dads that try to control everything. You know, I've had a history of that and I, I, I don't want that. They're their own people. They can make their own decisions. It's awesome when they make great decisions. It's awesome when they don't make a great decision and they come back to you and they say, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> Dude, man. I mean, like this is, uh, this is just beautiful. It is, it is right where I'm living. Uh, in fact, a couple nights ago, we had a situation where <clears throat> it was very clear to me what needed to be done. And of course, you're familiar with the meta roles and what we teach with that. And I was like, okay, don't be the leader right now. Be the sage. Don't fill the space. Make the space. And and just asking those questions and and letting the letting the wheels turn and to watch them come to that decision on their own I was like, yeah, good. You know, and not that I like you're saying, not that I agree with them all. The trajectory is pretty solid. I feel good about that. But occasionally, you have these big issues that flare up, and you're like, whoa. Uh, let's, yeah, the, let's the, not the tell question, them what to what do. What do you need from me? Mm. I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, there. go ahead. That's good. <laughs> the, the question, what do you need from me right now? That's hard. That's mm. a hard question to ask because when you ask it, they're going to give you a response. I, mm. I just need you to listen right now. Cause I don't know what I need to do and I need to talk my way through it. Hey, will you tell me what to do? Okay. I may tell you what to do, but I'd love for you to, figure this out on your own by asking you some questions. Um, but th that's a, that's a control releasing question. What do you need for me right now? Cause you go from the leader, I'm going to tell you what to do and how to do it <laughs> to coach. And okay. What do you think about that? How do you think that's going to work out if you do that? <sighs> and that's hard. Yeah, buddy. I, you, you know, I think for me, oh, this whole thing is so meta in a way because this is a comment I meant to make. I meant to make earlier when you mentioned Gary's name. You you were so representative of something that shifted <clears throat> a couple of years ago with Site Shift, where it was this first group of people that were coached by people other than me that were getting certified in coaching, um, and and so it was like truly this multi generational thing, and to see the work that you put in. And and how you accelerated your development through that, it, it's just, man, people that are listening to this can go, he's like hit like wisdom on like four different topics already. Uh, and and that's evident of, you know, this effort you've been putting into to growing your awareness. So so props on that. Um, Thank you. With you're obviously whether it's the organization or serving in these organizations in the weekend and nonprofits and churches, you're connected to people. You're seeing what's happening right now. If you could like get a message of encouragement to people, something out there that would just help them right now, what do you think something either leaders need to hear right now or, or people at large? Well, I think the number one place I go to is you're not alone. Uh, a lot of times we, we create our own obstacles in our head by thinking that nobody will understand. Nobody is going through what I'm going through. Um, man, even years ago, pre site shift, um, I had a, a, a mentor in my life that said something very profound. What you're going through is normal. And I'm like, it just feels so abnormal. Hmm. And I just needed somebody to tell me that it was normal. I needed somebody to to, to kind of get in the trenches with me and say, hey, I, I've been here. I'm not going to tell you how to get out because how I got out, I don't want you to take how I got out and get out. You know, let's work through it together. Um, the other piece of encouragement, maybe for those that, you know, they may be on the giving of the encouragement side is there's a lot of times where, 
I, I've used the term leaning in a, a lot. And you really get to know somebody when you can lean into their pain. And we need to be open mm -hmm. and, and very intentional. When somebody's going through something, somebody feel is feeling their um, I'm alone. Get in there with them because that's when true connection is made. That's when you get to experience true feelings. That's where you feel true appreciation. I don't want to overuse the term love. You know, love is it, it, love comes in a multitude of forms. Um, but people really know that you care when when you roll up your sleeves and you kind of get in the trenches with them. Um, during this really key pivotal point in my life. Years ago, I was reading Sight Shift. I was reading Brene Brown's um, Gift of uh, Imperfection mm -hmm. and another book. And people were looking at me like, you're nuts. You're reading all three of those very deep books at the same time. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty crazy right now. I, I, I was in the thick of it, um, you know, processing my anxiety that I don't have anymore. I'm not telling you that I never deal with anxiety. Mm. I have anxious thoughts. But when I have those anxious thoughts... We just have a different relationship now than what we had before. That's awesome. Talk a little bit more about that. Cause I think you said something last time we caught up that I thought was <clears> great <throat> and I remember it and I can prompt it, but yeah, talk about the relationship to anxiety and how it's changed. I mean, I, I remember, um, I, I had to go on a short day trip down to Cincinnati and I remember getting in my car and I was shaking and I'm like, eh, this ain't good. Mm. Um, <clears throat> questioning my worth questioning, um, uh, you know, am I really called to do what I was called to do mm -hmm. over a cold? And um, I remember going to uh, uh, a devotional app that I was getting a lot out of. And um, uh there's a lot of people in the business world, also in the church world, that know who Craig Groeschel is from Oklahoma. And I was reading a devotional that he put together based on his book. I think it's Winning Winning the War in the Mind or Winning the Battle in the Mind. I can't remember the exact name of it. And I remember after like two days of the devotional, I, I went, wait a second. I I want more of this. And I didn't realize that it was a book. I just thought it was a devotional he put together. Mm -hmm. So I quickly went to Amazon, downloaded the book on, onto my iPad, and I was through it in, in, in a week. And I remember going, I don't have to live this way. Mm. I really can, I can overcome this. And we're not talking willpower or anything like that. It's just a different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And I, I put myself in a position to where I would recognize, and, and I, do, I do this now, um, it's it's second nature to me now. I can recognize the anxious thought coming at a distance. Mm -hmm. When before, I would recognize the anxious thought when it was right here in my face. And if I could recognize it a mile out, I go, okay, what in, what's going on on the inside of me that's triggering this? Is there an insecurity that's triggering this? Is it control? Because what I found myself doing is I was in such control that control masked my anxiety. Mm -hmm. And when I let go of control, my anxiety shot through the roof. I'm like, ah, I cannot, I, I can't do this anymore. I don't like how I'm feeling. I don't like how wound I am. And when I started to just try to relax a little bit, it took a lot of walks. It took a lot of, of, intentional meditation time to, to clear my head. It took a lot of fixing my thinking because mm. I, I, I would be the one that would process all of those scenarios. Mm -hmm. How could it go wrong? Mm. Every, every one of them. And now it's like, you know, it, it's okay. The unknown is going to be the unknown. I'm secure in who I am. I'm secure in how I want to approach this. I'm okay with that. With, telling somebody, I don't know. I'm okay with asking somebody, can you explain that a little bit more? I'm okay with asking somebody, why do you do it that way? Mm. Dude. I'm okay with pushing back where I wasn't okay pushing back on things. But more importantly, th there was a lot of things that I chose to do because I was afraid to tell somebody no.
Hmm. That's a boundary now. <clears throat> Thank you. I mean, I can only imagine how many people listening to this that have had trouble saying no. I mean, just you're, you're hitting, I think, so many relevant pain points. And there's two things that I want to draw out because I don't want it to be missed that people don't always articulate. It happens for everyone, but they don't notice it and they definitely don't articulate it. And that is one, it gets worse before it gets better when you're doing this kind of work because you are doing something to numb out and keep the, the raw feeling of that existential terror from hitting. And when you gave up the control, the anxiety, you know, it, it feels like it's increased because now it's here and I can't get away from it. And then the second was how because of the work that you've done, and this was the thing I was going to prompt you with if you didn't remember. So bravo, dude. This is such a killer point. Now you feel it farther off before it's like right up here on your face. Um, there's a guy, man, I think it's Michael Singer, Book Untethered, something like that. But he just talks about how this, you know, once you've done this work of the core, you know, our language identity, but once you've done this core work, you start to notice the fear when it's at the edges before it's already messing with the core. And I still get the fear at the edges. Occasionally I get it at the core, but how much quicker I recognize it, you know, even in the body, like, you know, it might've shown up in my face, tense and angry, where now I feel it in my ankle, right? And the very way I'm starting to shift all because, you know, that awareness grows. So Ken, um, man, I, you know, you remember that concentrated orange juice when we were kids, that they used to buy in the freezer section and you watered. I don't even know if they still sell that that way. Uh, we got away from the juice as much for the sugars, but this episode has been like the concentrated juice form. <laughs> so much good stuff here. Uh, if people wanted to connect with you more, or find a way and uh, wanted to do that, where would you point them to? They can, they can look me up on LinkedIn. I, I'd be more than happy to connect with them. Um, I am choosing who I connect with. I, I get a lot of weird, weird request sure. but um <clears throat> I, i'm not a linkedin open networker yeah but uh but it, it, at the same time um i can't say how many times i've reached out to people over the last six months where i don't know them and it's been like hey i really like what you said about this mm. and i'd love to connect with you and they're like hey really appreciate that you know and and, and they connect right back and I, you know i know we always you know, linkedin is always uh there's always somebody out there saying oh this is that, that's a Facebook topic or that's this or that's that, or keep this business related. Um, business people are people and business people hurt yeah. and business people get happy. And, you know, we can't be so stiff all the time because I, I, I don't want to have to maintain that stiffness. I just want to, I want to flow just, you know, not using your words or, or, you know, uh, you know, flip, flip, lean in, flip and flow. Right I, I don't want that. I, I just, I want to flow. Yeah. And, and what I mean by that is I just want it to be, this is me. This is natural me. If you're having a conversation about marketing and integrations and, you know, broken systems and stuff like that, this is how I'm going to talk to you. Mm. If you want to talk about church, this is how I'm going to talk to you. You know, people don't need another fake person trying to shove something down their throat. They just want to know that they're appreciated. They want to know that they're heard mm. and they want to know that you value what they're saying. And there's, you know, I think that's what we're lacking today is just this authenticity and realizing that people are people. We're people first. We're not what we do. We're who we are. I, I don't care for the president of a company or a CEO or, or, you know, uh, sales development representative trying to get a meeting with with a ceo or whatever we're people we put on our pants the same way every day we breathe the same air we need food <laughs> you know food for our yeah. bodies and food for our minds yeah we, we we need all this stuff to be healthy so let's be there for one another that's awesome man it's like we had the meal and then we got some dessert speaking of food with this last <laughs> reminder of who we are and that's the core and we align so much on that so what a treat so ken hogan on linkedin columbus ohio that'll probably get them there um ken thank you for being here today for sharing from your heart and your life helping us get encouraged on the journey as we seek to impact people and live from that identity 
Appreciate it so much, buddy. Thanks, man.